what's going on in this video i am going to use react context api within the next.js version 13 app directory as you know all components inside the app directory are by default server components in next.js version 13 context is fully supported within the client components but it cannot be used directly within the server components this is because server components cannot use react hook after all they are not interactive so using context API inside the app directory can be a little tricky even if you know how to use context API already. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is the final form of application which we are going to create today. In this application, we will create a context API which keeps a list of dummy products. And also we have two pages in our application. The home page which is responsible for retrieving the products from the context API and render them to the screen. And also we have add product page in which we can add a product to our context API. So if I go ahead and create a dummy product here, so I say product one and set its price to 150 and click on the app button, go back to our homepage and you can see we have a product one with the price of 150 which we have just created so i think it's enough with the introduction and let's go create this application okay i open up my visual studio code and i have created a next.js version 13 application here we have the app directory and the first thing i want to do is to create the home page of our application so i'm going to create a page uh, tsx inside the app directory and inside it i'm going to create a functional component and rename it to the home page the next thing i want to do is to create our layout file so for the sake of time i'm just copy and paste the layout file into our app directory as you can see it's just a app bar with two links here one for the home page and another for the uh, add product page and then i'm going to copy the product card component with just a card component and takes a product as its props and then render the product name and also the product price into the screen. The shape of the product object is type of product interface and this product interface just has an ID, name and a price. That simple. And next thing I want to do is to create our context. So here in the root path of our project, I'm going to create a folder named context. And then inside it, I'm going to create a file named productcontext.ts. And inside this file, I am going to create our context. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create an interface for the shape of our context. So I say interface, I product context. And then inside it, I'm going to say products, which is type of products. And we are going to have a list of them. And then we are going to have a add product which is going to be a function and takes a product and then return nothing so we have a list of products in our context and also a function which takes a product as its argument and then add it to the list of products here and next we are going to create our context so i say export const product context equals to create context function which comes from the react and set its generic type to i product context which we have defined here and then pass an object to this function which contains our initial value for our context so i say product and set it to a empty list for now and also our add product function which is a empty function for now note that we are not going to define add product function here we are going to define it inside the product context provider which we are going to create in a minute and the last thing i want to do in this file is to create a custom hook for the simplicity of using our product context so i say export const use product context and set it to a function which returns use context which comes from the react and inside it we are going to pass our product context and that's it and now we are going to create our product context provider 
So I go to the context folder and create a file named product context provider.tsx. And then create a functional component here and define an interface for its props. And this interface is going to have only the children. So I say children and say to react node. Then here we take the children out of the props of the components. And inside this component, we are going to define our states. So I say const products and set products, which is going to be a use state and set a generic type to a list of product and set an initial value to an empty list. And the next thing I want to define our add product function. So I say const add product takes a product as its argument and inside it we are going to set the ID of new product. We set it to length of this product list. So I say products dot length and then call our set products here and add the new product to our product list. And then in the return statement of our component, we are going to say product context dot provider and set the value of the provider to an object which takes this product states here and also this add product here. And then inside the product context dot provider, we are going to render our children. And that's it for our product context provider components here. So let's use this product context provider inside our app directory components. So I go to the app directory and create a component named product container and create a functional component here. In this component, we are going to consume our product context API. So I say const use product context so remember the use product context is the custom hook that we have created in the last line of product context.ts file. So I go back to the product container and from the use product context, we extract the products list. And then in the JSX, we are going to loop through the products and then show them to the user. But before doing so, we are going to say if the products list is empty, then return a no product added yet custom message to the user. And then in the main JSX, we're going to loop through the products and show them to the user. So I copy and paste some of the Tailwind CSS classes here. And then we just say products.map and then use our product card component. and send each product of the product list into the product card to show them to the user. And that's it for this component and let's import it on our homepage component here. Okay, I think we are good to go to run our server and test our application. So I say npm run dev here and then click on this link to open up my browser. And here we go, we got an error which says that you're importing a component that needs create context. And this works only in the client components, but not the server components. So here we are going to go to the product container.tsx and go to the product container here. And you can see that this component consume our context API. So here on the top of it, we just say use client. And let's save this and refresh our server to see if the error is gone. And you can see that the error is gone. And here we can see that no product added yet message on the screen. And this is because we don't have any product on our product context yet. So let's implement the add product functionality into our application. So I go back to the VS code. And then in the app directory, I create a folder add product to create our route 
and this add product folder i'm going to create a page.tsx for our route and for now just export a functional component and name it to the add product page and then create another component named app in this component we are going to create a simple form which is responsible for adding a new product into our context API so first of all let me add to use state here name and price for the product this is the name of the product and this is the price of the product and let quickly copy and paste the JSX form here then import the components here we have two text box and also a button uh, with the onclick event which calls the add function which we haven't defined yet so let me define the add function here so I say const add I say to a function and here we have to call add product function which we have defined in our product context API so let's import the add product function from our context API so I say const use product context and then extract the add product out of it so here we can use the add product inside the add function here so I say add product and then pass the name and price of our new product here and then set the price to zero actually we are clearing our form after adding the product and set name to a empty string I know this is not a good way to create a form in react we should use a library such as react hook form to create a form in the right way but we're not going to cover the react hook form in this particular video so i created this simple form with the use state functionality which is not a good idea by the way i think we are done with this component and let's go to our page component here inside the add product folder and import the add product we just have created and let's go to our browser to test the add product page I click on the add product and here we got an error again which says that you're importing a component that needs use state so use state is another hook as you know and it only works inside the client components but not server component. So we have to mark one of these components with the use client annotation. So I go back to the VS Code and in the add component here on the top, I mark it with the use client and save it and go back to the browser. And you can see that the error is gone. And let's create a dummy product here for the testing purpose. So I said product one just and set the price to I don't know 151 and let's add it and if I go back to the home and we can't see the added product here we should see that in the home page so let's go back to our VS code and find the problem so if I go to the layout.tsx here yes we haven't wrapped our children in the root layout of our application with the product context provider so if I wrap the children with the product context provider the error should go away so let's save this and go back to our browser but I think we are getting another error which says that the product context provider also use use state and it's not annotated with the use client so let's go back to our VS code and annotate the product context provider with the use client on the top and save this and go back to our browser to see if the error is gone so let's uh, quickly add a product here and let's go to the home and we should see that our product is now added to the home page of our application so let's quickly add another product product 2 for example 
set its price and click on the add button go back to home and you can see the second product is now added to our part context api and in this way we have integrated our context api with the app directory functionality in Next.js version 13. so before ending this video let me quickly review what we have done in this video first of all i have created a product context here i define an interface for the shape of our context and then create context with the shape of the interface which we have defined earlier and then create a custom hook for simplicity of accessing our product context and then i create a component named product context provider which keeps the state of our product context and also acts as a wrapper provider for the entire application so the components that are rendered as a children of this provider component can access to the state of the product context api and note that we have annotated this component with the use client because it uses use state and then we have created two components a product container which consume the use product context hook and extract the products out of it and then render the products on the screen and also here note that in order to use this custom hook inside our component we marked it with the use client and then i created a add component for adding a new product to our context api and here again we have marked it with the use client because it uses use state and also use product context in this component we have created a simple form which takes the name and the price of a new component from the user and then call the add product function from our product context and then add a product into our product context api and in order to consume the context api in the root layout of our application we wrap the children of our root layout with the product context provider which we have defined in the context folder and as i said acts as a provider for our context api okay i think that's it for today and in the next video i'm going to show you how we can integrate the next auth with the app directory in the next.js version 13 and if you like the video please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button see you in the next one bye bye